So this is the January 5th show. Yeah. All right, this is going to be a fun show today on finishing well. As the title of this particular show is Life Insurance and Life Insurance Abundantly. That sounds good. As we talked about at the end of last week's show that, wow, you know, the way that Social Security is these days, at, you know, the first spouse that goes, the second spouse is going to be left with a significant you know, maybe half the income that they previously had certainly would be, in my wife's case, were I to be deceased. And so as I, as I began to process, you know, and, and I've seen men that love their wives really well. And, and you know, I, I often have asked the question, God, how can, how can I life, love my wife better? How do I go about loving her well? And I, I, and I get that I'm supposed to be pointing her to God, and I, I get that I'm supposed to you know, take part in making her spotless and all those things that Jesus is doing. But then there's this house, this idea of counsel, which is, you know, every human being is is made with this, what I call a special sauce. <laughs> you know, that's something that's uniquely theirs. And I'll bet you, if you really sat down and began to think about what is it in my spouse that she or he does uniquely well, that just just really highlights the world. And, 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 and then I think about, wow, what can I do, even in my posterity, even as I pass away, to make sure that she has a way to bring the kingdom of God and reflect that glory? Because again, that special sauce in my wife, I know is a reflection of Jesus. And if you know my wife, you would know that she exceeds in loving children very, very well. You know, like child services or even holding babies in a nursery, but she also exceeds in, in helping elderly in a similar way and even special needs, which is what, you know, Tammy and I have done for a number of years. So how cool would it be if I would plan for that, Hans, as, as I look at my Social Security benefits and go, wow, well, if I began to take that early and I started to invest in something so that Tammy could use this to glorify God, actually advance the kingdom with the way that she glorifies God and, and plan something in her retirement that would advance the kingdom or give her the resources to be able to do that. It's something we could plan for, right? Oh, it absolutely is. And I so was it, thinking, I was setting the bar here a much lower level <laughs> of just talking about replacing that lost Social Security income, but you've definitely raised the bar here. Well, you might remember at the end of the show, I said, I want my wife to say ka-ching, you know, not because Robbie's gone, but because I realized that with the resources that Robbie left me, there's new ways that I can advance the kingdom and that more people would to know our Savior and more people, you know, would be, get, be, be able to see the glory God gave her. Listen, I was telling you just on the break here, that, you know, I've been selling life insurance and offering life insurance for 42 years. So it's been a while. And I've delivered a lot of um, death checks or settlement checks to beneficiaries and to families. Um, and that's certainly, well, it's bittersweet because they've lost a loved one. But, it, you know, the will is never settled yet. I mean, it's just the, the, so, so the, everything's in upheaval because this is generally about a month later, sometimes even a little quicker than that. Um, and, you know, I contrast that to delivering a new policy to somebody that just purchased it, and there's a lot of joy there. I mean, I, I can just feel it, and it's almost universal. And many times this is the same person that was just objecting all the way along the line, and they kind of avoiding it raising reasons that they can't afford it or they can't do it. But when they've, when they've finally done it and then they've gotten approved by the company and now we're delivering the policy, just the joy that I can feel in that and the sense of satisfaction. And I'm going to connect that to what you just said of what you want to do. I mean, yeah, and just, I, if I could give a minute to tell a story that just blesses my socks off because I happen to know about it. And if you've listened to the Truth Net for network for a while, you've, you've probably heard a segment by Karen Mulder called Wisdom of the Wounded. 
And, and Karen Mulder's husband was a very, very successful door builder in Holland, Michigan. He, makes, he made doors for years and years, and he sold the company. And he, you can tell if you've listened to Karen's segment that she's a gifted lady when it comes to helping widows and, and caregivers and, and just sage wisdom. Mm-hmm. And he recognized that in his wife. And he went about funding her ministry. And he went about promoting his wife. And all of us, you know, I can tell you the many, many times I've heard her segment and been blessed by her wisdom as a result of a husband who saw his wife's glory and invested in it and planned for it so that she would continue to have this ministry as long as she wanted to have it. You know, and I, I, I just think, wow. And, and the blessing that, that we've had here in the Truth Network and whatever, that how could I love my wife well like that and plan for that? As we go into this season, because, you know, Karen didn't start doing that when she was in her 40s. You know, she started doing it when she was in her 70s, and I'm guessing she might be in her 80s now. And, you know, he has still found a way to provide for that ministry and for her to glorify God in that way. And that's available to all of us to love our spouses that well. Well, it is. And it goes both ways. It's from wives to husbands as well. I mean, we don't know who's going to go first. Right. And when we're doing retirement planning... We're wanting to put that in the positive, and we're wanting to send both of them into their mid-80s, late-80s, early-90s, mid-90s. And if if it really works out that way, um, life insurance is still going to be nice, but not as necessary as it is if one of them makes it into their 70s, and maybe even the late 70s or 80, and then the other one lives on for another 10 or 15 or 20 years. That second person, just when it comes to Social Security, but in a lot of other things now, is going to be forced to live on less. And it doesn't cost that much less for one to live than it does two. I mean, the bills don't cut in half, certainly, when, 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 when somebody uh, passes on. So, you know, what I want to do is get into my book a little bit and just talk about it. It's the Complete Cardinal Guide to Planning for and Living in Retirement. Um, It's on Amazon. Uh, We have both the original book and the workbook edition. Um, You can buy it on Amazon. It's by Hans Scheil. You can also go to cardinalguide.com and go to the Seven Worries tab, and you can download the chapters that pertain to life insurance, which we're talking about today, for free on a PDF or uh, and or you can send me a message on the website that just says, hey, would you please send me your book? And I'll be glad to do that. Uh, give me your address if you want the paper copy or you want the digital copy. Send me your email address and we'll get it right out to you. So if I go into the workbook, which you can download this chapter later on or right now if you're sitting at your computer, and I'm into the workbook and I'm on page 88, and just a simple thing where we're talking about, do I really need life insurance in retirement? Whether I'm married or single, do I need life insurance? And there's a lot of people that think that the answer to that is no. Kids are grown, house is paid for, my term insurance has expired, um, I'm not working anymore, I won't suffer a loss of income, or my household won't, um, don't really need it. And so I wrote this in the workbook to just say as a minimum, I think that everybody walking the planet ought to have $25,000 worth of life insurance. And you say, well, where'd you come up with that? Well, top of page 88, we're saying as a minimum $10,000 for a funeral, $2,000 for attorney's fees for a state settlement, and that's for a small estate. Um, if you have a much larger state, it's going to cost you a lot more than that. A thousand dollars for an executor, executor, as opposed to nothing. Again, this is for a small estate. Um, if you know a person is going to be the executor of your estate, they're going to go through some personal liability and a lot of work, and it's appropriate. A lot of them buy insurance. They buy a small insurance policy for the liability of executing things properly. At the very least, a thousand dollars and 6 to 12 months of income replacement. And that's really where I'm zeroing in at a minimum, which is $12,000. You add all that up, it's 25000 bucks. 
Yeah, and I, you know, I think about even in my own situation that, you know, my father's wife's passed away, but if he were to pass away, you know, he's still got a household, the taxes are still coming due, the water's still got to be turned on, and all this stuff, and his will won't probate overnight. I mean, you know, where is the money going to come from for that stuff to get handled in the meantime, right? You know, it, it's the most well-to-do family member that pays for the funeral in situations like that where you have a single person that passes away. Sure, they can have assets. Who can get at them? And you got to get to this attorney, and then you got to pay the attorney right when you get there to open up the estate, open up the accounts. The life insurance is like right now. It creates estate liquidity. And I'm talking about here as a minimum. And then I go on in the workbook to just give some examples because that's the next question people have is like, and they're like walking around with this question. This is my experience. A whole bunch of people walking around. How much would $25,000 or how much would $100,000 of life insurance cost me? Well, you know, that can be answered with a simple phone call to me. And I promise I won't try to close you over the telephone or something. I'd be glad to give you the information. You can go write my workbook. And I have an example of a 55-year-old, a 70-year-old um, for four different types of policies that are all whole life that offer you 25000 that are guaranteed to be in effect when you die. And um, if you wanted more than 25000 you can use the examples in the book. You can just multiply this times 10 or times 4 and multiply everything in there. And sure, it'd be a little bit less. You, you you get a little savings for buying a bigger policy, but not enough really that that the numbers aren't going to at least be directionally accurate. So you are listening to Finishing Well with Certified Financial Planner Hans Scheil in today's program, Life Insurance and Life Assurance Abundantly, which is, you know, the, that's kind of an interesting term, life insurance. So we're, we're going to get into that. And the, the other thing that I think is really going to be fun when we come back, and I'd like you to just ponder with me a minute. I happen to know this year I became aware of a life insurance that was paid out to a star that you all know that would never have been a star. We wouldn't have been blessed by hundreds of songs that I can think of and, and, and some that are extremely poignant. And one great movie had his father not said, you know, I'm going to set about a, part, a, a life insurance policy so that he could follow his dream. Wow. We'll find out who that was and more about life insurance and life abundant. We're all enjoying the life and the kingdom's moving forward because this man invested in his son with a probably a modest life insurance policy, but it made all the difference when we come back on Finishing Well. Thank you. I suppose you know the story. Or maybe yeah. you don't know the story of Bart Millard. Yeah. That the, the I can only imagine movie showed that his father bought that life insurance policy so that he could follow his dream. And when his dad died, he didn't have to work so he could Right, the mute, the mute, the the song. The I can only yeah. imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so in the next section, now we want to drill down around this because we we just skipped right over that, and this is really what it's about. So even if this is all you get, I don't want to belittle it because you're, you you know you're, you're removing a burden from your spouse, and you are providing some adjustment income. Right? Oh yeah. I, 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 I couldn't agree that that's, that's a minimum, but don't, you know, you know, think through how can I love my family well, you know, and plan for it ahead of time. If you, yeah. if you know, you got something like that, that who knows that it might be a, a, some other family member you want to make sure that you have some way to, you know, invest in what they're doing for the kingdom, a missionary son or a, oh, a, yeah. a missionary daughter, um, Because I, you know, I, I think it's an amazing thing that it, that came out in the story. Oh, yeah. Did you see the movie? No, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, my goodness. I need to see it. His father was I watched some clips of it on YouTube. And, yeah. um, in fact, the guy who produced the movie, Joe Kanop, I'm doing a new radio show with him at start this year. Um, it's going to be the real story with Joe Kanop. And, and so he's one of my new projects. 
Welcome back to Finishing Well. Today's show here in our new year for 2019 is life insurance and life insurance abundantly. And, and, and that idea of, wow, how can I invest into someone else's life in, in a life insurance policy? And before the break, I mentioned that I think you all are pretty familiar with this particular person, Bart Millard with Mercy Me wrote the song, I Can Only Imagine, and you know how he was able to write that, was his father bought a modest life insurance policy, and when he passed away, he, he handed his you know, son this, life, you know, this check with the knowledge. He said, I don't want you to have to work. I want you to be able to work on your music and, and invest in your dream. And so in doing that, his father invested in the kingdom because we all think of the songs that Mercy Me has come out with oh, yeah. that we would not have had this man had not invested in the kingdom and the way he went. So, you know, yes, we have the spousal thing. We're talking about the minimum 25000 or whatever. But maybe you have a son who's wanting to be a missionary, go to Africa, or, or a daughter that wants to write music. You know, something that you see that they've got this glory of God and, 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 and you want to invest in the kingdom. You know, what a neat thing to find a way to invest in that um, for eternity. Well, yeah. So, so I want to put in a couple of points here. Number one, this 25000 which we're talking about, is small, but I don't want to belittle it. I think if I could get a whole bunch of our listeners that have small amounts or no life insurance that are in retirement to 25000 I would consider it very good that what I've done for their families, okay, and what I've done for their legacy. And so, you know, what I want to say about that is the 25000 is tax-free, it avoids probate. A lot of folks don't know this about life insurance, is that there's no, it doesn't go to the will, it doesn't matter what it says in your will. Whoever you write as the beneficiary is who's the life insurance company is going to write the check to. So you can pick one of your children if you're going to have them look after your affairs. If, if your spouse, we're talking about spouses, you have your spouse, but you can name a you know, one of your children is the contingent beneficiary. Whoever's going to be looking after your estate in the end needs to be the beneficiary. And this money's going to come quickly. And just we get people paid real quick in the States. We do these all the time. Um, and I wanted to zero in on that income replacement. And you already did part of this for me earlier where you were talking about your father. Is the people that aren't married that are single and say, what in the world do I need life insurance for? They could just use the money in the you know, in the state or the money I have in the bank, it's very hard to access. And then it, it, it just creates a burden for people. It, it, it'll end up working. But what this is going to do is just create an immediate sum of money that's going to go right to who the person is taking care of that. And included in that is $12,000 for income replacement. And you say, what in the world do I need income replacement for if I don't have a spouse remaining? And what you need it for is somebody's going to have to pay your mortgage on your house and pay the power bill and pay the, you know, I don't know, the dock fees and uh, just they're going to have to pay the bills, pay the people that are mowing the lawn, uh, pay the taxes, uh, pay themselves to go over there and be fiddling with this stuff all the time. You got to get somebody to clean the place out. Um, so, so there's expenses that continue on. A lot of these seniors or retired people that I have working, they've got adult kids still living with them. And I wouldn't suggest making him the beneficiary unless he's your only one. You might want to make your daughter that lives across town the beneficiary and then knowing that he's not going to move right out of there or if he's inheriting the house, um, he, he's going to need a little bit of a get start when mom's been paying the bills. So there's plenty of need for a single person to have that income replacement. And well, the other thing I think that is probably on a lot of people's minds is, gee, I'm 85 years old. I can't get life insurance. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, a lot of folks think that, um, but it's not correct. You can get life insurance all the way up through age 89, at least in my agency. And you can get it with some pretty serious health conditions. So let's look at 25000 It's right in the workbook on pages 88 through 91. Four policies. These are female rates. These aren't the, the, the preferred rates, so they maybe could be a little less. I just wanted to be a fourth rate. There'll be a little more for men. 
Um, age 55, $25,000 of whole life, pay to 100, 488 bucks a year at age 55, 1,079 a year at age 70, and all the ages in between. So that's less than 100 bucks a month. Yeah, at age 70. Right. Yeah, about 90. And it's guaranteed to never go up. It's not term insurance. You pay to 100, you're still alive at 100, you quit paying, it still pays at your death. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Miss Beck would have beat that deal by four years. <laughs> really? Now, this policy so comes with... At age 100, you don't have to keep paying? It comes with a complimentary and free physical exam, okay, <laughs> which I know you'll look forward to. Okay? Okay. So then immediately people are going to say, wait a minute. Now, I mean, you don't have to pass with flying colors. You just got to make it through it. I mean, you can have some troubles in your past, and you can have some some things that could seem pretty severe and maybe they're just going to rate you. So they're going to charge you a little bit more, but then they would guarantee that premium. But so, so again, for healthy to moderately healthy people, this is just very affordable. And when we're going to buy larger amounts, we're going to use this policy possible for people with some pretty bad sicknesses to pay more. But many people with bad sicknesses are going to get turned down on that. Next product, just about everybody qualifies. It has a yes-no application. An example of that's in my book. Uh, it's called Simplified Underwriting. You go through and you answer a bunch of questions, yes, no, and if they're all no, it's some pretty serious stuff on that application. Then we do a phone interview, which we do together with the insurance company. They issue the policy immediately. 25000 of insurance. Very, it's called Easy Issue. The same female at age 55, 744 bucks a year. The man, excuse me, the, the woman who's 70 is paying 1442 a year. So now we're up to 125 bucks a month, a little less than that. Um, for the exact same 25,000, but they have, there's a whole lot of people that are going to slip through that. Okay? And for the people that can't get that, we've got people on this next policy that had kidney dialysis. They bought this thing. This is this is a miracle. You can buy it with uh, cancer. I mean, just all the things that you just think you're uninsurable. You can buy. Well, you can actually buy more than twenty five thousand. But the price for this fifty five year old lady is a thousand and fifty nine a year. Um, for the seventy year old, it's two thousand and forty six. So now we're up at like one hundred and seventy bucks a month. But we're yeah. talking about somebody who has already been diagnosed with, like, you know, breast cancer or, or you know, liver disease or Doesn't something. Doesn't matter what it is. Right. Um, and, you know, you know when I know that I have a salesperson that works for me that really understands this is when they look at me and they say, how in the world can the insurance company do that when we're looking at getting one of these people insured? And as soon as they say that to me, I say, now they've got it. And what I answer to them is, you know, the insurance company, who I'm not going to name, they know what they're doing. I mean, insurance companies don't lose money on stuff that they've put forth. Now, I would tell you, if you want to call it a catch, this policy does not pay its full benefit until it's been in force for two years. So, in other words, if you bought this at age 70 and you paid the 2046 for two years or you paid the 170 some a month, um, and you died within the first two years, they're going to put to your beneficiary all your premiums that you paid plus 10%. So your beneficiaries are just going to get the premiums back plus some pretty good interest. You make it to the 25th month, and it pays off from then on in full. So it is, it's really a miracle. And we've got that from two different very large companies, and sometimes we have people trying to buy all they can buy, and we can stack them, and we can get them 100000 of this type of insurance. And it's a blessing for people that are uninsured that are now finally getting it. Like, man, I wish I had some. Well, there is something for you. Right, and you don't have to wait till you're 75 to get it. If you get it while you're 55, you can see the savings, you know, are substantial, like, you know, or advising your children to get it when they're 20. Yeah, and I got one more. So this is for the people that say, oh, I've got my money in the bank. I don't need life insurance. I don't need that 25000 Well, I'm telling you, if it's in the bank, it's going to be tied up in probate. And it also 
Most of them don't have 25,000 sitting there. And even if they do, it's going to be hard to get. This thing is called single premium whole life. So you only make one premium on this. And for that 55-year-old woman, it's $10,593. So she writes one check for that, transfers it over. She's got a $25,000 policy paid up for the rest of her life. Doesn't matter when she goes. Right. Pays pay- 25000 For the 70-year-old, it's 15432 so you pay fifteen thousand, and you're going to know that you're going to get more than ten thousand dollars more than you, you paid for. Your it. beneficiaries are. You're not right. going to get it. You've got to leave everything <laughs> behind. Remember, oh, I think right. it says that in the Bible somewhere. <laughs> but but nonetheless, we have people that buy very large policies with these, and we have other products that offers enhanced interest, and we have a whole assortment of them. But what I wrote in the book was just simple stuff. That's four different ways, depending upon your health, depending upon how you want to pay for it. Uh, I just had four simple examples. And, you know, you download these chapters, you look in the book. And, of course, to get a rate at your exact age and all that, you can just give me a buzz. I'll, I'll be glad to give it or send me a message. I'll, and we I don't have much it. time to get into this, but I don't want to miss out on it because it's, it's something in this subject when we're talking about life insurance abundant are these hybrids with long-term care. So there's a way that you could get the life insurance and kind of have the benefit of knowing you got long-term care insurance with Absolutely. it. Absolutely. It's just hybrids are simple. They allow you before you're deceased, so now you're utilizing nursing care, assisted living, home health care, to get a portion of your death benefit every month or every year, and perhaps all the way up to the whole death benefit, and for long-term care. So you can buy a large enough policy, and you can know that your beneficiaries are ultimately going to get the benefit out of it at death unless you need it earlier for long-term care. I mean, we have a lot of ways to package this stuff, a lot of different products. It's wonderful. Right, and it's a matter of saying, okay, well, you know, it's kind of a neat time to do it before you, you know, if you're in your early 60s, but it's not late to do it, too late to do it if you're in your 80s, but just to go, wow, you know, there is a way to give life and life abundantly, even in our posterity through our state, you know, with a little bit of planning and, and the help from our friends. And so we would urge you to go to cardinalguide.com. Don't forget the guide. You've got to put cardinal like the bird and then guide.com. And there you can look at the seven worries tab, tab, download any of those chapters, or just go to the contact Hans page there or the contact us and contact Hans. He'll send you out the book, you know, just send his email. And again, we are just grateful. We really are that you're joining us here in 2019. And we're so excited to get this year started off with life and life abundantly. Thank you for listening to Finishing Well. Bless you.